So good afternoon, and thank you for staying until the very last minute. Uh, I am Zhang, and uh, I'm from the Center for Creative Initiatives and Health and Population. And we're a public health NGO based in Hanoi, Vietnam. And uh, today I'm presenting my team uh, to talk about a project that we're doing uh, using mobile devices to promote a home-based treatment for children with autism in Vietnam. Uh, so you might recall from the keynote, one of the keynote uh, research this morning, um, that talking about uh, the rising prevalence of autism and that might be linked to chemical exposure. Um, so we do not know yet about the exact etiology of autism, but what we do know is that the prevalence is really increasingly globally. Um, and an estimate of the WHO recently is that everyone, one in every 100 children uh, is diagnosed with autism. And that's why autism is becoming an uh, emerging global health concern. Um, the situation in Vietnam is not very optimistic because many children with autism are undiagnosed and misdiagnosed and receive no intervention due to limited resources, uh, human resources as well as expertise. Um, and the parents of the children lack access to information and affordable intervention services. So most of the services are private and have to be paid out of pocket and there's no governmental support. Um, but in that light, um, even though services are very expensive, what we do know is that uh, the parent-led intervention, so home-based intervention, where the parents, not the doctors or not the teachers, are actually the one who teach the skills for their children, that has a lot of, um, that can lead to very good outcome for the children later on in their development. Um, and we do know that from some pilot studies in uh, India, Bangladesh and Pakistan, that home-based intervention is effective and is very possible in low resource communities. So when we do not have doctors, we do not have teachers, and the parents cannot afford um, private uh, intervention services. So home-based intervention might be a solution. Um, so after we identify that home-based intervention might be a solution, how do we deliver home-based intervention? Because the parents are not the doctors and they are not teachers. They might not know how to um, teach the skills for their children. So um, here is a picture of um, a man holding a, a mobile phone and he's doing some, um, he's scanning this code over there and then send it to a system and he will receive information about this particular type of medicine. So mobile health has been applied widely in the, uh, public health and medical practices. And in Vietnam, as well as globally, there is a great environment for mobile health to, uh, to grow because of the increasing uh, Wi-Fi network as well as te technology, uh, telecommunication. So again, M health application is possible and is very effective in low resource setting because it can help reduce the disparity in terms of um, access to health care for especially for people in rural and uh, remote area because everyone can have access to mobile phone now uh, quite easily so back to our project autism 365 we use mo mobile device uh, we develop a website that can be accessed to mobile devices uh, that is connected to the internet and through that, we will provide, we'll promote home-based intervention. And the website has three main functions, but our presentation will focus on the intervention part. So the parents can also do uh, screening and diagnosing on the website, but that uh, will be presented tomorrow if you care more about that function. Um, so my presentation today is more about um, documenting and describing how we developed this uh, website and also the lesson that we have learned during our implementation of this uh, project and this initiative because it's a very new approach in Vietnam. So in order to, uh, so the first step of developing this website is that we identify the user's needs. So we did a formative research with uh, parents of children with autism and we asked them uh, 
what are the most uh, concerning problems of their children that, that these parents want to address. Um, so they talked about things like behavioral management, uh, communication skills, so they want to be able to teach their children how to talk or how to make a social interaction. And then we also do a lot of user interface and usability testing because it's related to technology and we have to acknowledge that many people might not be familiar with using mobile phone, especially for health purposes. So user interface and usability testing um, is conducted in order to make sure that everyone can understand how the website functions and um, whether it's easy to use or whether it's user friendly at all. Um, and we have to constantly ask the users if they are satisfied with our product and we have to do a lot of modification. So after identifying the user's needs, uh, what we do is we develop the tools that will help the parents to teach skills of their children at home. So first of all, we help them to learn how to implement innovation. So we make, uh, we film, we make videos modeling intervention in a home-based setting. So a therapist, so we invite a therapist that will do um, a model intervention session with a child with autism and we film that so that when the parents go to the website, they can watch the video and see how the intervention is conducted and they can, imi they can imitate and they copy it and do the same with their child. And we also do provide written instructions and tips. And then we help them, the parents track their children's progress. So there are questionnaires and assessment and the parents can um, answer a few questions about their children's ability before and after the intervention so that they can see if um, one month or two months later, there's any progress with their children. Um, and finally, we do provide support for the parents uh, through a hotline, and then we set up a parent group so that they can discuss with each other and share their experience on how they have uh, applied, how they have used the website in implementing their intervention. So this is a uh, sample page of our website. Um, so here on the right side, you can see the menu, and that's, um, that's the sixth intervention theme that we focus on uh, on the website. So it's learning and playing, self-independent skill, communication skill, participation skill. And these are um, the more specific. So for example, this is how to use a scissor, how to play with others outside, and how, to, uh, how the parents can make toys for their children. And when you click into one of these icons, you will go to another page. And on this page, there will be the tools that I just presented. So this is the video. Um, it's three to five minutes long. This is the written text. And here, if you click here, you can access the uh, short questionnaires so that you can do it after and before the intervention. So we launched our website in early January. And these are some of the uh, initial results uh, four months and eight months after the launching. So this is the result when we submitted the abstract, and this is the result that we got um, on August 14th. So uh, we were able to develop 41 video lessons that include videos and questionnaires and text. And up to now we have 30, uh, 5, 6, 366 register accounts, and uh, the website is used in 45 provinces out of 63 provinces in Vietnam. And we also looked at what kind of skills that the parents are most interested in teaching their children to do. Uh, so these are some of the numbers. And the highest one is how to teach their children to imitate and participate, because this is a foundational skill for improving communication and social interaction. So because we, this is a pilot project, we have to do a lot of monitoring and evaluation. And so what we do is, the tools that we provide the parents to help them keep track of their children's progress, we also use that data to see if our model is effective in improving the outcome for the children. We also do in-depth interview with parents. We ask them what are the barriers, what are the motivations, and whether they want to see anything improved in our website. And we also do a small, uh, evaluation study. Uh, I forgot to put the time here, but it's six months long. Uh, we started in March. We did, we invite 30 families to be, uh, to participate in this study. 
and we did a pre-intervention assessment. And then the parents are committed to do home-based intervention with your children using our website. And then six months later, we, do, we use the same tool to, uh, to assess them again. And uh, we will be collecting data in uh, September. So this is a picture of a mother who used our website to teach uh, his, her son's skill. And that's a very encouraging uh, comment for us. So there are some challenges in implementation and that these challenges are also recognized in other mobile health applications, especially in real resource settings, including reli unreliable infrastructure. So things like 3G coverage, not reliable, or slow response rate. Um, there's no problem with IT literacy and zero behavior. So many, even though smartphones are popular, but many people do not use them for health purposes. Or maybe grandparents, they are not familiar with smartphones at all. Um, the parents might not be confident enough, even though they got training, they are not confident to do the intervention because they think that only the doctors and the teachers can do that. And so they feel that they are not confident enough. And also a problem with our data collecting to, in order to provide more evidence for this program is that um, many parents do not use all of the functions on the website. So we're missing, we're missing some data about whether the children has improved or not. Um, some of the lessons learned. We learned that the communication and balancing the needs and expectations of all stakeholders involved in this project is very important. So we have our project team, we have the IT people, the computer people, we have the parents, which are our target user. We also have experts who help us to develop the content. Um, so one example of the balancing the needs and expectation is that we require the parents to register and log into our website in order to view the videos because we want to collect data. But then it adds extra, st extra steps for the parents. So they have to register through their emails, go to their emails to activate. And all of that makes it more difficult for parents, especially those who are not familiar at all with the system. So we have to do a lot of negotiation. and. Um, but there's a lot of negotiation and we have to improve it a lot so that we can reduce the step, make it easier for them. But we still require them to log in, unfortunately. Um, and then we also provide more support and guidance for the parents. So we try to increase the interaction between the parents and our team because if not, they will just be talking to the device and not having any human interaction in that. It's not very motivating. So. Um, we try to engage them in uh, group discussion and we try to provide them on-site training, so like meeting, so that they can see uh, that they are psychologically supported as well. Uh, so conclusion. So our website is uh, at the moment free. Um, we hope that it can be sustainable. Uh, when we find out more about an uh, in innovative way for financing it. Um, and it provides access to information and intervention support to family families nationwide, including those in more rural and remote area. And then uh, it's, the results are very encouraging. But we will need to improve a lot in terms of content and quality, um, and most importantly, improve the way we collect our data so that we can have more evidence for scaling up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jing Li. Uh, you present uh, your work is very interesting. I think that you all agree with me. So now it's the floor for you. Ask many questions. We have a lot of time, plenty of time. Please. I'm from Singapore and actually I'm, I'm quite interested in this because actually my, my wife also works with her autistic children back in Singapore. So um, one of the things which I've been asking her when she does interventions like this is 
um, you're, you're working with young children and young children they will develop after maybe four months to six months naturally without any interventions so is there a way for you to, um, to be able to evaluate how much extra uh, benefit your, your tool is giving in addition to what, how they will naturally be improving just given the cost of time and growing up? Uh, thank you. So that, yeah, that's a very good question relating to uh, in terms of uh, evaluation. So we do believe that um, home-based intervention is only good if the children also receive like a more comprehensive care package. So we do not um, discourage parents from uh, going to the doctor or sending their children to the school. We also we just think that if they can have access to more resources also at home, that will all together improve the outcome of their children. And for some parents who are not able to go to any school at all, this might be their only resources. So that's, all, that's a very good question because um, it's really difficult to uh, like separate the effect of our website from other uh, intervention uh, schemes, maybe at school or from the therapist. Um, so that's why we believe that randomized control studies will be very effective, but for the purpose of this project, we have not been able to do that. And we hope that in the second phase of the project, if we do get more financing, we will be, we will be able to do a randomized control. And that will have to be over a long time because it takes like maybe like a year to see improvements in the children. Hope that answers your questions. In fact, you might even have a natural cohort of exposed versus unexposed because I think not all the, um, I, I assume that you are actually monitoring the, the outcome for all the children, whether or not uh, in your, under your organization, whether or not they are taking up um, this home-based uh, pool or whether they are not, right? So actually that means you have two natural um, arms already. You have people who are having this, using this tool at home, and then you have these other people who may not have access or they are not interested in the tool and can, can actually compare the outcomes between the two tools, possibly. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something to consider for evaluation purposes. Yeah. Can you summarize the point? Okay. I'm sorry, I guess it's... No, it's just a comment, but uh, I can discuss I can, I can again with the one. Okay, yeah, thank just, you. Just because we have two arms to compare. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to add that we do have some free uh, information for the parents that they don't have to register with our system at all, so we do have knowledge, like one of the function of the website is to provide knowledge to uh, like to everyone who cares about this this topic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.